This program is made possible by Mason's Wallet and patrons like you. Thank you. Hey guys, so I know I normally do console gaming related stuff, but today I decided I want to build a PC. So right here I have all the parts. I've been shopping around on the used marketplace a ton and I managed to get a beast budget gaming machine. This all is $300. So don't just take my word for it though. Let's go ahead and start building it. Why, why do you have that? Dude, I know how to build a computer. You gotta use tools. Wait, look at, wait. Oh, this is what I wanted. Wait. I wanna give a quick little disclaimer. These are all purchased used. You may be able to find better things for the money used. You may not be able to get as good of deals as I did used, or you may get better deals. For the CPU, I ended up going with the i5-3570K. This is an Ivy Bridge processor, so it's a little older, but it still packs quite a punch and can be overclocked pretty easily. This was bundled together with my motherboard. For the motherboard, I ended up going with the ASRock Z77 Extreme 4. I personally have had a lot of good experience with ASRock motherboards, so I decided to go with this. It has a lot of good features, and I really like the color scheme as well. I picked up both of these for $100. I ended up going with one 8 gig stick of HyperX Fury RAM. This set me back about $40. Oh man, this GPU is so cool. This is a Sapphire 280X. Whenever I first got into upgrading my PC like really heavily, the 280X had just came out. So I really like this card a lot. And I picked it up for a fantastic price at $75. I didn't need a ton of storage for this build. So I ended up going with an SSD. Obviously feel free to try and get a hard drive instead. I ended up picking up a Samsung 840 Pro 256 gigabyte SSD for $40. Because of the price of shipping, a lot of times I find better deals on PC cases purchasing them new. I actually ended up going with this brand, I had never heard of it or used it before, it's DIY PC, the DIY Model X, and it features steel and tempered glass, and this thing I got for $25. The Corsair CX550M is a semi-modular power supply that has really nice black cables. I really hate the power supplies. A lot of them don't have black cables. This one completely blacked out, semi-modular, super nice, and I got it for around $20. Now here comes the fun part, the game benchmarks. I am gonna show you my own benchmarks in a minute, but real quick, I just wanna make a comparison between some of the tests I've done and some of the tests other YouTubers have done on their own similarly priced hardware. Here's a $350 build running Doom below 30 FPS average on the lowest settings at 1080p. So Doom's actually kind of a weird game because it has OpenGL and Vulkan support. I unfortunately am not able to benchmark Vulkan, but I am gonna show you my averages that I got on OpenGL. So Doom max settings at 1080p, I got an average about 53 FPS. The minimum frames was 13 and the maximum was 977. If you want to tweak the settings a tiny bit, I'm sure you can get 60 FPS average. Or if you want to enable Vulkan, I definitely think you can comfortably get to 60 frames with all the settings turned up. I do think Vulkan actually adds a pretty good chunk of power to this particular system. Unfortunately, I, like I said, I'm not able to benchmark it. Here's a $400 PC running Fortnite on medium settings at around 65 FPS average. Now I didn't test this game at medium settings, but I tested it in max settings and we averaged about 60 FPS. So our build's definitely a lot stronger. If we bump this down to medium, it certainly would jump up or pass that five FPS. Our minimum frames we got was four. I think that's probably whenever I was loading in the game. And then the max was 67. So as you can tell so far, we are hanging with computers that are more expensive. Now I could keep going through YouTube videos all day, but I'm just gonna go ahead and jump up the price range. Here's a $550 gaming PC running Overwatch at Epic settings. Their average is about 55 frames per second. But whenever I ran Overwatch max settings on my system, I got an average of 73 frames per second with minimum of 50 and max of 97. So obviously buying used is an incredibly good value. Again, beating a $550 system. I am gonna quit showing other people's stuff though and just gonna 
finish up with my own benchmarks. Realm Royale was played at max settings and had an average of 126 frames per second. Our minimum frames were 40 and our maximum frames were 151. This game runs really well. This is actually the first game I've ever played of this. It's pretty cool. On PUBG at max settings, we managed to get an average of about 53 frames per second, our minimum frame 24, and maximum frames 90. If you want to achieve 60 FPS, just drop some of the settings down a little bit and you'll hit it no problem. GTA 5 single player max settings, we had an average of 94 FPS, a minimum of 33 FPS, and a maximum of 268 FPS. This is using the built-in game benchmark. CSGO max settings, our average was 137 frames per second. Our minimum was zero. I'm assuming that's some sort of loading thing. And our maximum was 270. I remember getting an upgrade on my computer for a 280X while playing The Witcher 2 a lot, which is what this system is using. So I decided I'd benchmark The Witcher 2. This game got an average of 61 frames per second, minimum of 31 frames per second, and maximum of 64 frames per second. For The Witcher 3, I made sure none of the NVIDIA hair effects were on. I also had the settings on high instead of very high or extreme or whatever they call it. With all those settings, we ended up having an average FPS of 56, minimum of 22, and maximum of 74 frames per second. I want to show off a variety of different games, so here's a slightly older title, Bioshock Infinite. We had an average of 85 frames per second, our low was 35, and our high was 145. I know there's another Tomb Raider out now, but I don't have that, so I'm just testing the first Tomb Raider reboot game. This is on Ultimate Settings without all the weird NVIDIA hair effects. We had an average of 98 frames per second, minimum of 76 and maximum of 120. If you want to turn on the NVIDIA hair effects, you're gonna lose a lot of frames. We did still get an average of about 60 frames per second with the hair effects on them. So I decided to test this game because whenever it first came out it ran really bad, but now it seems like it's been improved a lot and we can actually run it really well. So Batman Arkham Knight had an average of 72 frames per second, a minimum of 49, and a maximum of 101. Metro Last Light may not be the newest title, but it does have a pretty good in-game benchmark tool and the game's still kind of hard to run, so max settings with tessellation on very high. We had an average of 33 frames per second, a max of 58, and minimum of 9. But whenever we turned tessellation off, we had an average of 51 frames per second, minimum of 18, and maximum of 110. And of course, we need to know, can it run Crisis? And yes, it can. So I played this 1080p max settings, Crisis 1, not 2 or 3. We had an average of 59 frames per second, minimum frame was 1, I'm assuming that's a loading thing, and maximum frames was 115. Oh, I almost forgot, here's the completed build. I am actually going to make an entire separate video on the build process. So make sure to subscribe to keep up with that. And here's an outro that has literally nothing to do with building a PC. Hope you like it. Oh my god, it's a dog. Hello, dog. What's the dog's pee stance? I need to I need to know so I can prepare. Uh, the tail goes down and like Oh no, it's yeah. a lever. <laughs> you pull the lever and the the strawberry river commences. Let's take a dip in the strawberry river.